Hello and welcome once again to The Bike Show. Plenty to get through this week with international and local news, but first we're going to start with Don and a completely new model from Triumph. This is a Trident, and so is this. A Trident is of course an artifact of untold mythical powers. It is also the latest release by British bike maker Triumph. One is for ruling the seven seas. The other is a funky and more affordable method of moving around. But which is best? Of course, all questions are always answerable with a drag race. So here we go. And with that conclusively settled, let's focus on the winner. This is what they call an entry-level motorcycle. It's for people who are new to the biking scene, they like the old funky Triumph world, but they don't necessarily want to start moving continents on a Rocket 3 just yet. So for them, Triumph have made the Trident. Where the new Speed Triple pushes 177 horsepower and the Street Triple 765 pushes 116, the Trident comes in at a somewhat more pedestrian 80 horsepower with 64 Nm of torque. Triumph used to have a motor called a 675. It was a beautiful motor, lovely in every way, but then it got replaced by the 765. So they took the 675, then chucked it in the skip. And then one day some other engineer was walking past and was chuck his chip packet into the skip and said, hey, somebody left a perfectly good 675 motor here. So they took that, thought they'd use it for something else, made a bunch of changes, in fact, they made 67 changes to it, so it's basically a different motor now. Most notably, they shortened the stroke, so now it's a 660cc. While this power is not the greatest news for setting lap times, it's not such a bad idea when making something entry level. Yeah, 80, 80 horsepower isn't exactly going to light your hair on fire, but here's the trick, right? 80 horsepower could be either really boring or really exciting. And luckily they made it very exciting, that's what Triumph does. It's a triple motor this, so, you know, Trident couldn't stab your enemies, but it can move you places. And 90% of the torque, the 64 Nm of torque, is available throughout the rev range. So even though you're not in a measurable manner moving forward very quickly, you do get this lovely feeling <laughs> of movement. It just feels so good. And there's a quick shifter. <laughs> of course, 90% of torque is nothing without control, so Triumph gave us some of that. The seating feels sort of neutral, I mean they're not too far over the bars, you're not too quite upright, it's sort of neutral and there's plenty of space to move around, the seat's surprisingly comfortable, and they've used the steel trellis frame, or the tubing frame as they like to call it, which, as we know, works well. The shocks are by shower. They're not top of the range. In fact, I'm looking down at the forks here. They're not even adjustable. However, when you're riding a bike like this, you don't need top of the range forks. I mean, it's also got the Nissan calipers, also not top of the range Brembo's. But you know what? When you're, uh, when, when you're approaching a bike like this, no one's really going to be going into hairpin corners, trailing the brakes where you need top of the range suspension. You don't. And where we are now works fine, especially as this bike weighs just 189 kilograms wet. So it's light as all hell, it's small as all hell, it feels so good. And it can do this. And there's some electronicalness. It's not the high tech goods found on the track models, but it is there. They've given this bike its own special TFT display. You've got a whole lot of buttons here, look all neat and nice. Uh, two riding modes, traction control, ABS, and all the fun stuff. So far, so good for an entry level bike. A term usually synonymous with a bit cheap and nasty. But this is Triumph. Cheap and nasty doesn't happen. Have a look at this machine, look at it. it, it is utterly beautiful, even though it is more kind of simplistic and it hasn't got the top of the line, most sophisticated goods on here, it is still a beautiful machine. Also look at the components, you know, these buttons, that dash, uh, the sort of bars and little bit braces and things, they're all 
solid and sort of crafted. And that just makes the price of this thing even more incredible. Now, the closest to it in its sort of class is the Street Triple 765. That, in its base model, is 180,000 Rand. This base model is 150,000 Rand. For all of this, 150,000 Rand. That's that's excellent. This exact bike has a few extras though. The matte black costs a bit more. The screen costs a bit more. It's got some crash bars. It's got the bash blade at the bottom. That adds about 25,000 Rand to the price. So even with all the extras that make it look good and feel good, it is still cheaper than a base model 765. I like that a lot. I, I really like it. I can completely understand why Don is so impressed with the Trident. It is pretty closely related to one of my favorite bikes of all time, the 675 Street Triple R. And of course, Triumphs these days are beautifully put together with a level of finish and detailing that puts many other manufacturers to shame. I may not have yet ridden the Triumph, but I have seen it in the flesh, and I'm pretty sure that in its segment, it's probably the classiest piece of kit available. And so, what is its segment? Well, it is that middleweight, naked sort of area that isn't a full-on sport bike. There's only two of those really, and they're only middleweights by the skin of their teeth. The first one Don referred to in his piece and is Triumph's own 765 Street Triple, and the other is KTM's 890 Duke R. Both are truly exceptional sport bikes, and the KTM is knocking on 900 cc's, which to me at least is still a very strange definition of a middleweight. I'll come back to the Street Triple in a minute, but first let's take a look at the Trident's natural competitors, which are, in South Africa at least, Yamaha's MT-07 and Kawasaki's Z650. Both are of a very similar capacity, but both are parallel twins, so they're down a little bit on the Trident's 80 horsepower, with the MT-07 making 74 and the Kawasaki a fair amount less at 67. That's not the whole story though, because for a middleweight that is supposedly an entry-level road bike, torque is arguably the more important figure. And the Yamaha has 68 newton meters to the Triumph 67, while the Kawasaki is now much closer with 64 newton meters. So, in reality, the engines are all much closer than it would first appear. And then you get to the price, because the Yamaha is 15,000 Rand less than Triumph's 150,000 Rand, which is a fair old chunk of change. And then there's the Kawasaki that is at 123,000 Rand, offering a 27,000 Rand saving. Money no object, I'd probably take the Trident, though the MT-07 is also a well-built, dynamically capable mini sport bike, and that 15 grand saving would buy you a, a lot of tyres, insurance and assorted riding kit, so it's a difficult choice. It would be even more difficult if Honda's four-cylinder CB650R Neo Sports Cafe was available in South Africa, but it isn't. Still, that is a great looking bike that makes considerably more horsepower, 94 to be precise, and almost the same torque. Next, we come to the slightly unfair comparison that Don drew with Triumph's own Street Triple R. Sorry, Don, but the Street Triple, it's in a completely different league. That bike comes in three different flavours. Uh, there's the base S version, then there's an R with more power, 116 horsepower, as Don said. And finally, there's the absolutely exquisite RS with its top spec braking and suspension components and 121 horsepower. It's a modern classic, a truly, genuinely exceptional sport bike. As far as I can tell, neither the R or S versions of the Street Triple are brought into South Africa. It's only the RS. And amazingly, that is in fact available from 180,000 Rand. In Europe, in fact in France where I am, it retails for around 210,000 Rand and the Trident is about 140,000 Rand. That's a 70,000 Rand price difference between the two, which makes sense. 
In fact, it shows even with those numbers that the Street Triple RS offers a lot of bike for the money. In South Africa, that price difference is only 30,000 Rand. With the Trident being priced comparably to the rest of the world, that currently makes the Street Triple RS an incredible, frankly, unbelievable bargain. I asked Don to ring up and check, and it, it seems to be true. Why? I don't know. Perhaps the bikes were bought when the Rand experienced a moment of relative strength, which is pretty unlikely. Perhaps the factory helped out a lot on that container to help Triumph South Africa when the local market was going through some particularly tough times. Whatever the reason, and no matter how good the Triumph Trident is, and make no mistake, it is undoubtedly a very good bike, I would advise anyone thinking of getting one to beg, borrow, or sell a spare kidney, or an ear, or do something just to scrape together the extra 30k because the 765 Street Triple RS is worth so much more than that price difference suggests. Don's test trident there that had 25k's worth of trinkets fitted, which makes it 5,000 Rand less than the RS. If you buy that instead of the RS, then I will personally call your local psych ward and get you committed to a mental institution because if you ignore the RS in favour of a trident with some matte paint and a belly pan, then you're either clinically insane or stupid. On like an Olympic level. Gold medal dumb. So don't be. If Triumph hasn't run out of RS street triples by the end of this coming week, then I tell you, there's no hope for South African bikers. Once they've sold out, you'll be able to buy the excellent Trident without feeling like an idiot. And on that somewhat aggressive but very wise note, let's go for a short break.